Uh, hello, my name is Leonard Cohen. The show is called Offbeat. I'll be talking to uh, Christian Eckhart uh, very shortly. Symbolically, I could have shown up with a huge bowl of broken hearts, but you know. Können wir? Zu Gast bei Offbeat Leonard Cohen. Man kennt ihn von seinen etwas wehmütigen Texten. Und jetzt sitzt er hier. Er hat eine neue Platte rausgebracht, die heißt I'm Your Man. Und sie macht sich sehr gut. Allerdings scheint es, als habe er zum ersten Mal den Disco Beat entdeckt. Leonard Cohen, your new record. Um, obviously, he has discovered, you've discovered the disco beat on it. How come? I've always liked that kind of beat. I think this is a post-disco beat. Mm. I don't think it can be uh, accurately described as classical disco. Mm -hmm. This is postmodernist disco. Postmodernist disco? Yeah, and it uses uh, some references to the disco beat, but it uses them uh, ironically. Musically speaking, you were one of the first punks ever because you used three chords most of the time. That's right, I still am one of the first punks. So, uh, how do you feel? How do you feel about the new punks? Wonderful. Wonderful? Yeah, uh, you know, the, uh, Dylan has a great line in one of the songs, uh, if I don't make it, you know, my baby will. Mm -hmm. So, that's it that's about it. the punks? That's it. <laughs> There's a lot of people saying you lack a sense of humor. What do you say to that? It's true. It's I true. Have no sense of humor. You have no sense of humor at all? whatsoever. I don't see anything funny about anything. Mm -hmm. Do you know a joke? No, I don't like jokes. Why? They make me weep. They make you weep? Yes. I, I, I like uh, things that arise spontaneously, but... Um, I, 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 yeah, I do remember a joke. Could you tell us? Yes, uh, there were these two uh, cows. Mm -hmm. No, there were these two bulls that were on the top of a hill, and they were looking down the valley at a, uh, at a herd of cows. Mm -hmm. And uh, the young bull uh, says to the older bull, let's run down this uh, uh, hill and fuck us a couple of cows. And the older bull says, let's walk down and fuck them all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Good. Um, that's so far to jokes. What about um, <laughs> writing songs as depressive as they are? I mean, talking about the Book of Mercy, which is still available around here, and what kind of mood do you have to be to write that kind of songs? Those, uh, those, that kind of expression uh, is uh, appropriate to um, a nervous breakdown. Uh, if you find yourself with your back against the wall, you might, might find this book helpful mm -hmm. or appropriate, but it's certainly not something you can just pick up and leaf through. But it may be valuable if you find yourself in a bit of trouble sometimes. Mm -hmm. You just said there is another book of Psalms which is much better? There is another book of Psalms which is uh, one of the most beautiful expressions of devotion and faith and doubt uh, that we have in our, in our culture. And this is a very pale footnote to that book. Well, there's other people saying something different. I, myself, I like it very much. Uh, would you consider yourself a very religious person? I don't think those, uh, you know, the devil laughs uh, every time someone describes himself as religious. I, I wouldn't want to tempt uh, uh, whatever diabolical forces there are by describing myself as virtuous or religious. No, I, I'm not particularly religious. I forget about the whole matter for months at a time. Mm -hmm. It's only when, you, uh, when you're in trouble, mm -hmm. uh, when the level of anxiety or panic or suffering reaches certain intolerable levels that you turn uh, to, uh, a, 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 you try to locate an absolute uh, position in your life. Mm -hmm. What about politics? With your texts and lyrics, you influence the whole generation also in their way of doing politics right now, they're coming in power. What about politics? What do you think about politics today? I don't, uh, I don't have the time to think about politics. Uh, I, I, I don't know how people have... Uh, I haven't developed this reflective sense in my life. You know, I feel I'm on the front line of my life. Things are rushing in on me. 
with a terrific urgency. Mm -hmm. And I don't uh, seem to be able to uh, entertain these uh, recollections or speculations mm -hmm. about the various uh, modes of human activity. Uh, but I know that uh, my songs and my work uh, have a political application. They do. But I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, specific about it, you know. Mm -hmm. What made you bring out this new record? Was it the success Jennifer Warren's had with her famous Blue Raincoat album? Or well, was it something else? Jennifer's that? album did a, did a lot to uh, restoring my... Um, my uh, viability in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in many uh, record company offices throughout the world, my name had become a joke, mm -hmm. and uh, my kind of music had been determined as obsolete and as having no market value. Uh, Jennifer's record, um, uh, and her, uh, her, her attention to the songs and bringing that magnificent voice to these songs has rehabilitated my reputation mm -hmm. in the marketplace. So uh, CBS Records, for instance, in America, Columbia Re Records, which had dropped me, didn't put out my last record, they, they, we have been reconciled. Mm -hmm. What do you say when um, new groups like Nick Cave, for instance, uh, or the Sisters of Mercy, um, cover songs of yours? Have you heard them? Anyway? Yes, I have. How do you like yeah. them? Well, uh, you know, at any time uh, since I've begun writing songs, when anybody else has done a song of mine, I, my uh, critical faculties are suspended. My judgment evaporates. I'm happy when anybody does one of my songs. Mm. Can you do something with these songs? Are they, do they fit your intentions? Oh, I think that uh, Nick Cave's choice of that song uh, is brilliant, and I think his performance of it is perfect. Uh, the song was falling apart when I wrote it. Uh, uh, nobody understood what it meant or what it was all about. Mm -hmm. um, as if it had to have that kind of meaning. And Nick Cave uh, penetrated the song uh, thoroughly. I think his presentation of it is impeccable. Mm -hmm. he, he rescues it to let it fall apart again. Mm -hmm. How do you work? Do you have to be in a certain mood or I, a certain... I, I'm always working and uh, I have no strategy. Mm -hmm. And the work comes out of a... So you don't sit down in the morning, get a cup of coffee and sit down in a typewriter or something like that? Oh right? yes, so that's just, that's just the, the beginning. Mm -hmm. I wake up with a sense of order and optimism. Mm -hmm. By the time the afternoon comes around, it's a different story. But in the morning, uh, yes, I, I, I uh, get my jar of instant coffee and a large kettle of hot water and several packs of cigarettes. Uh, I open my notebooks. I put a, uh, a disc into my computer. I uh, turn on my uh, keyboards. I uh, tune my guitar. You probably robbed somebody's illusions right now. You turned on a disc to your computer, Leonard Cohen and the computer. Yes, I, I, I have a Macintosh. <laughs> And uh, then I, I, I begin a serious application. I begin applying myself seriously to the problem at hand. But um, it takes me a long time, although it's no guarantee of its excellence, it takes me a long time to finish a song. And I usually end up in, uh, in difficult circumstances mm -hmm. uh, with this work, and it takes a, a great deal of effort and uh, perseverance to bring it to completion. I gather you um, live between Montreal and Paris all the time, so you're, you're half European now? I uh, followed this record around to various places, and I, I recorded some of it in Paris, some of it in Montreal, mm -hmm. and some of it in Los Angeles. You know. I, don't, I don't live in Paris. You don't live in Paris? No, but I have connections, personal connections mm -hmm. there that bring me there from time to time. Where do you live then? I'm based in Montreal. Mm -hmm. That's where you stay all the time? Most of the time? Most of the time, mm -hmm. yeah. You live inside the city or outside? I live right in the middle of the city, mm -hmm. uh, in one of the older sections of the city, which is usually a, a section settled by uh, whatever new wave of immigrant labor has entered the country. Right now it's Portuguese mm -hmm. in my neighborhood. In the Book of Mercy, there's a, a thing that says, for my teacher. Who's your teacher? I meant that for a specific man. Uh, 
with whom I studied for many years. And uh, his name was uh, Sasaki, Joshua Sasaki. Mm -hmm. He's an elderly Japanese gentleman. He's uh, 81 years old. Mm -hmm. And he lives in uh, Los Angeles, and I studied with him for many years. Do you still have people who influence you? More and more uh, people influence me. Like, like whom? Like private people? Private or, people, or, yeah. yeah. yeah but not that. like public people. Like you, do you have an, an, an author or a writer or a singer? Not, or? not so much. Not so much, no. Mm. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, somehow right now there seems to be a, a, a large gap between uh, the private life and the public life. There don't seem to be figures in the public realm that, um, that speak for the private position. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're just in one of those periods, they, they come and go. When, when the, the space between one's private perceptions and the public expression is very large, there doesn't seem to be a politician mm -hmm. uh, that even uses the same kind of vocabulary that uh, uh, addresses myself or my friends. Uh, very few singers seem to be singing to, uh, seem to be addressing uh, our predicament or even de describing it. I don't mean a particularly profound illumination of our predicament. I mean even speaking about the kind of days that we live, mm -hmm. uh, the kind of thoughts that we have. There don't seem to be artists, uh, certainly not very many singers. Uh, filmmakers may be approaching it, but uh, it still seems remote. We're in one of those periods where the gap is, is wide. How big is the influence of Jennifer Warnes? The, the full-bodied uh, influence uh, of a close friend, mm -hmm. which I think in these days are, are the most potent influences in my life. Did you influence you on this latest record? Uh, I think you're speaking in a kind of linear way of, uh, uh, but I'd say yes to all all levels of influence. I think we've influenced each other uh, musically uh, and emotionally and uh, professionally and privately for 15 or 16 years now. Mm -hmm. But Jennifer's reading of one of my songs I always find fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, What do you feel when you, you hear other people reading your poems? The interp I, I, as I told you before, my, my critical apparatus is suspended immediately mm -hmm. as soon as someone uh, uh, takes one of my songs or pieces to do. I'm just happy that someone... Are you influenced by critics then? Uh, I've got a pretty thick skin. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody likes to be praised. Uh, there are very few critics that have illuminated my own artistic problems. Uh, you know, it's, 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 sometimes, sometimes I'm attacked um, from a certain point of view. Mm -hmm. But at this stage of the game, uh, if, I, uh, uh, if I can understand, if I can read the review, if it's, if it's in English or French, it's generally, in my view, the critic or, uh, that is on trial mm -hmm. as, as a writer. I tend to, to read the reviews as a critic. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I tend to read the reviews as to uh, determine whether or not the writer can write. Mm -hmm. So let the critics beware. I'm going to be reading them very carefully. <laughs> Do you enjoy going on tour and performing in front of people? I, I don't, can't say I really enjoy it from this perspective because it hasn't started yet and I'm nervous about it. Uh, I haven't put my band together, I haven't rehearsed. Um, I've got a month uh, and, and uh, some weeks to be able to do it. So I can't really say I enjoy the process now, but when, when, when I'm on the road uh, after the 20th or 30th concert, I have a certain sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, then it becomes traveling with a gang, mm -hmm. which is very agreeable. I like that feeling. Did you expect that you would have such a wide exception here? Coming back, just promoting, just just promoting a record. 
I, I, at this stage, I, I'm ready for anything. I, mm. I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the attention I get, and I'm also ready to um, be ignored. Mm -hmm. But of course, I would, I would prefer the other situation. And uh, I've spoke to a number of journalists here in the past two days, and uh, I'm, I'm touched by the hospitality of the journalists. Mm -hmm. Does it surprise you when, like, for instance, when we just met, people were signing autographs to young, two young girls, when young girls or young people know your works? Those people are said to be analphabets, non-reader. What do you think about the youth today? Well, you know, the, it says in the Talmud, there's good wine in every generation. Mm -hmm. So I've never had a position that the youth is uh, better in one generation or another generation, or one decade is more exciting than another. There's always, there's always people around who, you know, I don't think we have to get too solemn about these things. Uh, I think it's possible that uh, some very young people could, could like some of my songs. Uh, I met a journalist yesterday who told me her six-year-old daughter likes my, likes my stuff. Mm -hmm. So th these are pleasant surprises. Mm -hmm. But they're not, uh, you know, a song is just a song. We don't have to uh, solemnify this. Uh, are there any bigger works planned? You made a film, I gather, a video film. Is that true? I made a, uh, uh, well, I, I don't really consider that I've ever made a video. Mm. I've, I've delivered my music to accomplished directors. Mm -hmm. who have used it as, a, as the basis for the presentation of their own imagery. Mm -hmm. uh, Dominique Isaman, a Parisian director, uh, made my last video clip for First We Take Manhattan. Mm -hmm. It's quite, quite a uh, uh, stunning piece of work. Mm -hmm. But I don't consider it mine. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just in it. Well, the video has become a convention of the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm happy to cooperate, especially when there are directors like Dominic Eastman around that I can, that I can trust. Mm. Do you plan any books? Well, are I, you writing I, on one? I would, yeah, I, but I, I, you know, it's not, you know, it's bad luck to talk about those things in mm -hmm. advance. Yeah, but I, I, I hope to put out more books. Yeah. Well, nevertheless, I think it's a pity that your books aren't available around here, or not in that all of them. Well, they, they, they sell in such modest quantities that it, it really doesn't pay a publisher to keep them in print. Mm -hmm. So maybe if there's a publisher out there, can call you up? <laughs> so. Well, I thank you very much for this interview, and I hope to see you again on stage when you're back here. Oh, thank you With very a new much. band. Thanks a lot. Thank you.